welcome to another episode of Brewery Towns, the podcast that talks about brewing beer throughout the country. My name is Matt, and I am joined today by Katie. Hello, everybody. Thanks for joining us. This is your first episode, right? It is. Thank you so much for having me. I'm very excited. No worries. So I tried to pick um, a city that was close to South Carolina. How long, how long did you live down there? I lived in South Carolina for just about four years. Wow, so I'm yeah, I'm yeah. working I'm working on a Charleston episode, but okay, yeah, I haven't and you've been there, right? Oh yeah, yeah. Charleston was one of my favorite places down there. Absolutely gorgeous. I know it's it's on the it's like right on the beach, right? Mm-hmm. Yep. Mm. Yep. I'm working on that episode for you, so maybe we'll have you back. Uh, this Absolutely. today we're gonna go a little bit further inland, and we're gonna be talking about the town of Macon, Georgia. Okay. Have you ever heard of it? I have heard of it, yes. Of yeah. I, uh, have you been there? I've not been there. I actually, Georgia is the one place I did not venture to when I was in South Carolina. It's not, it, it's not very really direct. It's, it's pretty far. I'm looking at my notes here, and it says that Macon is 85 mile, miles south of Atlanta. So that would have mm-hmm. been pretty far from, yeah. from Columbia. In Columbia, where I was, it took about four, four and a half hours to get to Atlanta. Wow. No, I was just going to say, driving there, they have, like, these six-lane highways. <laughs> and, you know, the rules of driving in the South are very, very different. Um, yeah. I can't speak for the Georgia laws, but I know South Carolina laws, like, you don't have to have your car inspected. It is very lax. So the uh, quality of the vehicles on the road is always very poor, along with the quality of the drivers. So it was always, a, like, a risk thinking about trying <laughs> to drive there because it was so terrifying. <laughs> Well, you know the first rule of driving in Georgia? I do not. What is it? There are no rules. Oh, gosh. <laughs> yeah, that sounds just that sounds about right. Jesus, take the wheel. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so it's located south of Atlanta, and it's if you look on a map, Macon is really the geographical center of Georgia. So it's right smack in the middle, and it is the county seat of Bibb County county i have heard yes i've heard i've heard a lot about it i know a lot of people who are born in and around macon yeah it has if you look at like notable people from there and we'll i'll point out one of them it's it's like pretty impressive mm-hmm. yeah and it's like relatively small I, I guess i would call it a medium size it has about one hundred fifty thousand people mm-hmm. and the metro is only like two hundred fifty thousand. so a nice little area i think to live in i only know it because I know some teams from Macon, Georgia made it to like the Little League World Series back when I was like really into that. Mm-hmm. But that that's that's really the only thing I know about Macon. I, I've heard that as well. That they're big on. Um, they have a lot of youth. It's very youth centered. Very like community centered, youth centered. Yeah. I've heard that. Well, its nickname is the Heart of Georgia, which makes it seem like a nice place. Every episode we do a hometown, if we can, and so the person I chose from, for this episode that is from Macon is Jason Aldean. Oh, really? Yeah, I know. Wow, that's yeah. pretty special. I knew he was from Georgia, I didn't know it was Macon, but again, I know he gives back a lot to that com- the community and like lots of areas in Georgia. He like um, fixed up a lot of places, like, uh, what are they called? Parks. Did a lot of parks for children. Nice. He's a good guy. Nice. Well, it seems like his charitable work is better than his music. Yes. Yeah, we can definitely say that for sure. <laughs> okay, before <laughs> before we get into the history, uh, the sources that I uh, used for this episode is this magazine called 11th Hour, and they had a, an article from the Acme Brewing Historical Society, and then from the American Breweriana Journal, and from the Macon Telegraph. So I always like to give them a shout out. Absolutely. Okay, so Macon was inhabited by indigenous peoples for about 13,000 years. Um, it, white people first made it down there when Fort Benjamin Hawkins was built in the early 19th century. And it was originally named Newtown, and then it was changed to Macon, and it was technically founded in 1838. So I feel like fairly early for a southern town. Okay, so during the Civil War, it was the arsenal for the Confederate government, which is where, you know, they kept, like, all their um, weapons and ammunition. That's why I know it, yes. Huge artillery town. 
Yeah, which is interesting. And then it grew because it became a railroad hub and a textile center. They had a lot of cotton mills around here. So let's get into the beer. The first brewery in Macon was called Russell and Peter's Macon Brewery, and it was founded in 1837. Some people claim that it was the first brewery in all of the South. Wow. Yeah, I know, right? In Macon, Georgia. Wow, that's very interesting. But I, I don't think it's ever been confirmed. I think it's like a possible, like one that's in the running. Mm-hmm. Thinking about it, what like what what's like the Southern drink? Like, is it? Because I mean, like beer really isn't very big down there. I know. Um, either when I lived in South Carolina, like people love Yingling. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But um, other than like the more popular crafty beers that are coming out now, I don't really associate beer with the South. When you think of like Mississippi and Louisiana and Alabama. You know, they don't really have too big of a craft beer scene right now. Right. Yeah. Historically speaking, I don't know, because you think of like West Virginia and like the mining towns with like moonshining. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I I don't know. I don't don't know. And and you know me with geography. um, Embarrassingly (laughs) horrendous at it. (laughs) But um, so how close is Georgia to Tennessee? I think it does border the corner of it, like um, Chattanooga, I think is right yeah. on the on the border of Tennessee and Georgia. Okay, because even um, I, I ventured to the only um, west, the only as far west I went when I was down there, I went to Gatlinburg, and I'm mm. there. They li- they literally t- they do um, free moonshine tastings. Mm. You can just walk into any place and do a moonshine tasting, and they give you like those mini, mini, mini cups, like smaller than a pill, <laughs> yeah. like container, yeah. and you just do sh- shots of moonshine, and they just <laughs> give it to you. <laughs> I think we talked about this on uh, an early episode, but uh, when I went to a Jack Daniels, which is in Tennessee too, uh, they gave you the samples, but it was only enough to like put the taste on your tongue and not really swallow right. anything. And it's like mm-hmm. that's that's the worst part of alcohol because <laughs> you know you you want it you do it to get drunk, but if it's only on your tongue, you're just you just have that nasty taste. So I didn't right. enjoy yeah. it too much. Yeah, moonshine is not very. Um, <laughs> I mean, they do the flavors. They do mm-hmm. like apple pie and mm-hmm. stuff, but it's still it's still rubbing alcohol <laughs> yeah. essentially. <laughs> so that's pretty cool. That making. I mean, I consider that pretty special having a brewery from that era. Yeah, in yeah. that area. Yeah, Yeah, and it it only gets better. Russell and Peter's Macon Brewery. So interesting, they delivered by ship. They used this vessel called the SS Goddard, and they made regular deliveries down the river, and they stopped on the coast, and then they distributed to other cities on the Atlantic coast. And when the Civil War came to town, the Yankees actually allegedly opened kegs of beer and destroyed the brewery during the Civil War. Damn Yankees. I know. After the Civil War, um, it had another decade or so going, but then it closed in 1878. So the next brewery came around in 1889, and this was just called Macon Brewing Company. And it was in the old Potash Works building. I think I'm saying that right, Potash? Yeah, sounds about right. Do, do you know what Potash is? Or... I don't, but it sounds of like French origin, which <laughs> makes sense for that area. So I think Potash, I'm, I'm probably saying it wrong, is... In its simplest term, salt with potassium. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So I guess that, that was sense. that was a big um, good down mm-hmm. there. Yeah, it's probably not potash. I don't think that would <laughs> Pout- be. That, that, that might... <laughs> maybe. I don't think that would be... I don't think that's how... Uh, I don't think that would be the correct pronunciation. <laughs> so this Macon Brewing Company was bigger than um, those in Montgomery, nearby Montgomery, and nearby Savannah, Georgia. Are they still open? So this one isn't, but there is a brewery that we'll talk about called Macon Brewing Company that is okay, currently operating. I thought, so. mm-hmm. I thought so. Yeah, that, that I definitely feel like I've had some of their products. Yeah, yeah. Macon Brewing Company was only around four years because a big depression hit the region in the late um, 19th century, and they closed. Mm-hmm. Now, despite the depression coming, another brewery opened, and this is like the big brewery in Macon history. It was founded in 1893, and it was called the Acme Brewing Company. And let's see, the owner was Alex Block, and the vice president was actually the mayor of Macon, which is kind of wow. funny. Yeah, a, a yeah. lot a lot of these breweries, you see a lot of, I guess, important people in the town being involved in them. Okay, so Acme Brewing Company, they made a number of products. One of them was Acme Malt Tonic. 
and an advertisement for this beer read, A liquid food for invalids and nursing mothers, good for sickly women, not bad for well ones, for sale at all druggists. So Fascinating. I, if that doesn't make you go out and buy it, I don't know what will. Was it, is it like high in calories? Like what? Yeah. I guess so, a, a malt. Yeah, like I think like a stout. Yeah, I don't think it was a stout. You, you see a lot of these beers being promoted as liquid food. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, it, I mean, it could have been a stout because, you know, when you drink a stout now, it just makes you full, so you don't really eat anything. Right, that's, yeah, that's mm-hmm. right. Well, and also, I mean, I don't know if at this time, if it was still kind of a depression. I mean, there really wasn't a lot of food going around, mm-hmm. especially in non-port towns like the middle of Georgia. <laughs> yeah. But, but then imagine the middle of Georgia in summer and someone hand, hands you, like, a, a stout. You know, yeah, I, I yeah. just... Oh, God. Yeah, I know. Yeah. So we had the Acme Malt Tonic, and another product was called the American Queen. And mm-hmm. their advertisement read, a woman's beer, a child's beer, and a man's beer. It seems like they're, they're tar- uh, not targeting, but um, advertising to women a lot. Yeah, which is interesting, I know. Yeah, very interesting, especially in the South. Women weren't allowed to, like in public yes but i I guess they were the ones at home so maybe they were the ones that really needed or maybe they were the ones you know buying everything true yeah i um i think it's interesting that they advertise both to children and to nursing mothers just shows it was a different time percentage on these beers does it say i i it might have said i don't have it written down but i would imagine it was maybe four to five percent yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. absolutely. That's that's. But if you thinking. if you drink, you know, four or five of those, then you know it'll do the job. Right, and especially back in the day, I mean, mm-hmm. it's not like people. I mean, people were heavy drinkers, but uh, <laughs> it, it was more social drinking. It wasn't like mm-hmm. now where mm-hmm. we, where I I need two seven percent beers so that I'm <laughs> drunk. You know, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like they actually drank to enjoy what they were drinking. Right, right. So Acme Brewing Company, it became so big. Because in South Carolina, they passed a law in 1893, the same year that it was founded, that beer and liquor in South Carolina can only be purchased in state-run dispensaries. Okay. So Acme received a, a, contra- a very large contract to supply these dispensaries with their beer. That was a good contract. That was a good business move on their part. Yeah, I, I don't know uh, the intricacies of it, but well done. Yeah, absolutely. That was a very good business move. And as a result of that, they doubled capacity both in 1898 and in 1903. So within within 10 years of opening, they doubled their capacity twice. Wow. It's very mm-hmm. impressive. And, Such a short period of time. Yeah. And there's that whole uh, society that's like trying to unearth a lot of these uh, like artifacts and stories from the Acme Brewing Company. So it's still living on. That's awesome, especially considering, I mean... Going from the ones we just talked about, I mean, they, they barely stayed open, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you know, for over 10 years. That's like a mile mark. So that's very, very big for them. Yeah, it, it, they were going well, but then Prohibition had its first phase in Georgia in 1908. Mm-hmm. I usually read like really small quotes, but this article is just really good. So I'm going to read the whole thing to you and it might take a couple of minutes. Okay. So just buckle in. And um, I hope you enjoy it. So I'm ready for it. This is an article from the Macon Telegraph, and the headline read, Hundreds Rush Growler as Never Rushed Before. And here we go. In less than 10 minutes after the contents of the first keg had been poured into the drain connecting with the sewer, there were scores crowding around the tunnel-like opening that flowed foamy with beer. It was a sight never before seen, even by the oldest inhabitant, and almost unbelievable. Soon the news leaked out of the brewery that it was sure enough beer, and then there was a mad reckless rush for buckets, cans of anything that would hold a swallow or or so of the product of hops and malt. One big man, after searching in vain for a receptacle and finding his hat punctured with too many holes to be of use, stretched himself out on the soft clay bank and immersed practically his entire head into the intoxicating river. (laughs) When at no. last, when at last he gasped for breath, he, for breath, he exclaimed fervently, "Oh Lordy, let me die right now!" <laughs> <laughs> of course, there came a time when nothing but foam remained on the stream as a reminder of what had occurred. But even then, scores lingered around the place and hoped that a Moses would strike a rock which would gush forth beer. 
There were many incidents attendant upon this waste of beer, but none more amusing than that in which a little dog was the chief participant. <laughs> the canine, <laughs> the canine followed his juvenile master to the sewer, and probably having been, been given a taste of beer at some time or other, remembered the peculiarly <laughs> pleasing odor, and without delay commenced lapping up as much as he could from the stream. <laughs> In a oh short, in a short while, it was a very much changed and quite drunk little doggy, that endeavored in crawling up the bank. His efforts in this respect were ludicrous in the extreme, for he could not even stand up, much look, at, much less look his owner in the eyes. <laughs> <laughs> how how doggy will, will feel the morning after is purely a matter of conjecture but if all the beer is drunk that was taken away in buckets there will be many feeling lots worse than the dog today end story wow i i it, isn't that an amazing piece that is that's really good the the dog so wait why why were they dumping this out oh, because of pro- prohibition they had to dump beer mm-hmm, yep so pro i think prohibition came pretty quickly and without much notice so they probably went to the brewery and said we got to dump it all Mm -hmm. what's the i know um i'm not positive of the all of the liquor laws Mm. in georgia but i know still to this day like you can't buy alcohol on sundays like not even beer or anything no you can't buy any alcohol on sundays wow and i know like i know in north carolina you can't buy alcohol until 10 a.m on sunday yeah that's how Um, it was in texas too yeah, yeah. So I'm wondering, uh, Georgia, the, um, I'm not sure, but I know they've always had a very interesting laws. Well, it's just but so that, bu- it's so bizarre that each state has their <laughs> different laws. Mm-hmm. Like yeah, here, and I mean, I still it, it, it doesn't make any sense. Like, what's the difference between buying a bottle of, I remember it was a bottle of champagne I was trying to buy in North Carolina, and it was like literally like 9.45. They were like, oh, you got to wait until 10. And I'm like, why? Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, what's the, yeah, it makes know. makes no sense. And then here mm-hmm. in Colorado, in the grocery store, they have beer, wine, and liquor. You know, like oh. in Pennsylvania and in Texas, they only had wine and beer. Yeah. So it's yeah. just, it's I, hard to keep up with. That also, that story makes me laugh, too, just considering we're in the middle of a pandemic and people can't even stand next to each other. We got all these fools diving into a river of beer. (laughs) (laughs) They were fine. They were fine. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, how times (laughs) change. The first prohibition in Georgia only lasted three years, from 1908 to 1911. And then Acme started brewing actual beer again in 1912. But then prohibition was passed for good in 1918 and then mm-hmm. Acme started to produce some near beer which was like 0.5% and they called mm-hmm. it Malt Ale and Acme Brew. They just kind of stopped doing that. I guess it wasn't very profitable and then the company became an ice and bottling production site and then eventually it was converted into a meat packing plant and Acme was no more. Yes, that's what I know Acme as, the meat packing plant. Yes, that's why it's it's familiar. Oh it's, really? It's, Yes. Huh. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. They're um they were rivals with a couple of different um South Carolina. Like, Meter- they have a lot of chicken plants in yeah. um South Carolina, and I know that they were rivals with some Georgia meat packing plants. Hmm. It's hard to pick your favorite meadery. Acme ceased in making beer in 1918, and then the next brewery in Macon didn't come around for another 97 years. Wow. I know. It, it, it's like this in a lot of towns. Once prohibition hit. It, some of them came back, but in a lot of towns, they didn't come back until this modern boom. So in 2015, Macon Beer Company was again founded. And mm-hmm. this is probably the one that you know of. Yes. And let's see, there, a lot of their beers were like Macon something. So the one I wanted to highlight was Macon Love, and it's a fruit beer. And it got a oh. 3.52 on Untapped. But they have like Macon Love, like... Yeah, I should have probably wrote. Excellent. I should have probably written excellent. it down. <laughs> That's excellent marketing. That's excellent yeah, marketing. I I know I know you're like playing off the name, mm-hmm. which is cool. Yeah. Georgia had some interesting laws in 2014 pertaining to beer. In 2014 and before, breweries could only sell their beer offsite, so they couldn't sell any beer at their brewery. So there were no like tap rooms or anything. Interesting. Sorry, I'm just looking up. I'm looking up some more of the beer names, and uh, not to confuse oh. you, but here's some more. Are you ready? Yes. 
the making love that we talked about, making progress, making music, making money, making dreams, making history. See, I love that because mm-hmm. I like when I like when breweries have the name of where the brewery is in the beer. They, I, I like that because it's easier for me to remember. But the only problem, like, I, that, that doesn't tell you anything about what the beer is. True. True, like... Like what kind of beer. Yeah, you'd have to do a little bit more looking. But then some of these beers, if you look on the can, like, they don't even say, like, where they're brewed. Right. And, like, that that just makes me mad. Yeah, yeah. Especially, um, I I went to Asheville quite a few times. Mm -hmm. Like, a brewery capital. And so, even anywhere in the South, or, like, um, Sweetwater, a a lot of those big ones, like, they're, they're, they take pride in it. They want you to know exactly where it came from. They want that credit. Right, right. Do you remember any of the making beers? Have you had any of them? Do they ring a bell? Yes, um, I definitely had making history. Okay. Um, I remember because um, it was I I I like to make your own six packs mm-hmm. a lot. Mm-hmm. So I remember I saw it and I was thinking, huh, this you know got to give it a try. Making history. Yeah. Um, yeah, I remember. I just remember the quality of those beers is it, it, it's really fresh. It's super fresh. I mean, I remember um, a couple instances where I got Stone, like a, a 12-pack of Stone IPA or something like that, mm-hmm. and it, it, when I bought it, it was expired. <laughs> like, <laughs> it, said, it said, drink by this date, and it was like three months ago, and I was like, what the hell? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but I, that's why it's good to drink local, you know, you know it might be yeah, a little exactly. bit fresher. Yeah, so I remember just that, the, it, just the crispness, it's just, it had that fresh taste. Nice. Well, I'm reading about the Macon History beer, and it said that it looks like the first one depicted the famous Macon Terminal Station, and that future releases of the beer will feature other historic Macon landmarks. That's awesome. I know. That's awesome. Yeah, I'm a sucker for history. That's probably why I bought it. Honestly, yeah. if there was a if there was a picture of a railroad on it, I, I definitely <laughs> would have. Uh, I definitely would have gotten it. Yeah, and for those who are interested, it's a brown ale, and I got a 3.68 mm-hmm. on on tap, so not yeah. too bad. I remember that's when I was trying to broaden my, my IPA horizons. <laughs> I, I might have been, I might have been IPA'd, IPA'd yeah. out, and I was it, like, I need to try something different. It happens. It happens. Mm-hmm. So in 2014 and before, breweries could only sell their beer off-site. A lot of breweries just didn't open because it wasn't going to be profitable because you would need uh, like a canning line, and or you would just mm-hmm. need to fill kegs and have relationships with with bars and whatnot. Um, In 2015, it changed a little bit. Breweries could now give samples, but you had to go on a tour to get a sample or to even buy a growler. You couldn't just walk in and walk out. Okay. Which doesn't make much sense, but that's the way it was from 2015. And then in 2017, they finally changed it to where breweries in Georgia could sell their own beer on site. Wow. That's only three years ago. I know. Yeah, it took... Well, that's what I was thinking. I moved to South Carolina in 2015. I, I know. It's it, it's like so recent that they're changing these mm-hmm. laws. It's crazy. Well, I remember when I moved to South Carolina, um, they had just legalized um, tattooing. Oh, really? Yeah, tattoos were actually illegal <laughs> before 2015. I remember um, people would come up to me and be like, oh, my God, where did you get your work done? Um uh-huh. Because everyone had like pretty much prison tattoos. <laughs> That's <laughs> crazy. Pretty awful. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Wow. Well, it, it's really interesting too because we've done cities in North Carolina and Oregon, and you can see like laws in like the '80s and '90s that prepared them to be ahead of the craft beer scene, and like mm-hmm. that's why like you think of like Bend, Oregon, and then you think of Asheville, North Carolina, like you said, that's why they got a head start because they weren't hampered by some of these laws that the other states had. Absolutely. But Macon still still did pretty good. So they had Macon Beer Company in 2015, and then they had, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to butcher this name, but it's called Okmulgee Brew Pub. Mm-hmm. And Okmulgee is the name of the river in town. So the river's named Okmulgee, and then there are Indian mounds called the Okmulgee Indian Mounds, which is a historic national monument in town. Fascinating. Yeah, and so this brewery was founded in 2016 by uh, the Crescent family, and the product I wanted to highlight was the Muskogee Curse, and it got a 3.68 on Untapped, and it was named after this curse. Uh, The legend has it that the Muskogee, is that how you say it? 
Muskegee. Muskegee. Yeah. The Muskegee Creeks, mm-hmm. which was a tribe, put a curse on Macon, saying once you drank the river water that you were never allowed to leave. Huh. Yeah, so I don't know. Uh, Jason Aldean must have never drank, had the water. That's, but, that's fascinating. Why would they, oh, why would they want you to never leave? Yeah, I, I don't, may, maybe it's like when the whites came in, they like took over the land and they were like, ugh, since you took our land, you were never going to leave. Oh, okay, I see. Like, maybe. Oh, okay, that makes sense. That makes yeah. sense. It could be wrong, but that's how I that's how I read it. It's also fascinating because, I mean, they don't really talk about American Indians much in the South. I mean, I know South Carolina, it was all slavery, obviously. It's, I mean, it's a cotton state, so mm-hmm. slavery was always a big thing. But uh, I, I never heard really much about American Indian history. Yeah, I, yeah, like we said, they were here in Macon for 13,000 years. <laughs> yeah, is, that's, it, that's, yeah. It's, it's like not even uh, fathomable, really, to think about. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we have no concept of that kind of time. <laughs> I know, I know. Then that makes me think, I mean, we're talking about breweries. That makes me think, like, what, what did the American Indians drink? I mean, you know, or like, mm-hmm. what was their culture of alcohol and all that kind of good stuff? Yeah, I asked, we, we did a, the first episode of the season, we talked to the curator at the Oregon Hops Archives. And I, and I asked her what they drank in... She said that it's just not well documented, really, mm-hmm. which is a shame because I bet you they had some potent stuff. Oh, uh, oh yeah, yeah. One more to go here. We did Macon Beer Company. We did Akmolji. And the last brewery here is the Piedmont Brewery and Kitchen. And it's a brewery, and then the kitchen part is a smokehouse. And if you want to look up some good meat, look up the pictures from this place. It looks really good. Oh, yeah, Georgia and their meat. Mm. Oh, my gosh. Mm-mm-mm. It's like a, another, on another level, <laughs> total other level. I know. I, I, I don't even want to do the barbecue out here. I'm sure it's fine, but, you know, Texas barbecue was just super good. Mm-hmm. And then the more north you go, it just goes south. No pun intended. And, again, I, I, yeah, I really think it is, it, I really think it comes from, the respect for the product like I really think it's how they treat it they know where everything comes from I really think it makes a huge difference a co-worker of mine in South Carolina he went to Tuskegee University mm. um, and so he would often go back and visit um, for various events he was very he was in a, so a fraternity um, so he did a lot of like fraternity events and he actually brought home he brought me back um, like a platter it was ribs and uh, it was the best <laughs> ribs i've ever had in my entire life absolutely life-changing mm. well maybe when all this is over we need to go on a meat tour of the south yes oh absolutely breakfast lunch and dinner baby nothing goes better with beer than some, <laughs> yeah, that's true some meat. that's mm-hmm. true it's almost like like wine and cheese tasting like i really do think like they should start doing beer and meat cheese tasting maybe we <laughs> should oh my god we should do that well, you know, I've seen some of these breweries do, like, bacon flights with their beer. And they yes. give you different mm-hmm. flavored bacon, mm-hmm. which is interesting. But, I mean, this Piedmont Brewery and Kitchen seems like they're taking on that idea and running with it. Yeah, so Piedmont, founded in 2017. The product I wanted to highlight is Satisfied Local Lager. It got a 3.76, and it won silver at the 2019 U.S. Open Beer Championship. Wow, that's very impressive. Yeah, so... Sounds like a nice, easy drinking lager. And so I lied to you. I said that was the last brewery, but we actually have one more. Um, the Crescent family, who owns Okmulgee, actually just opened a new brewery in April of this year. And it's called Fall Line Brewing, Com- Brewing Company. And fall I, it, or fault? F- fall. Okay. But I, I think it it's named after a fault line that's called the Fall Line. Or I could just be getting very confused. It's about that. I, yeah. It's about that time in the episode where I start just losing it. So I, I think it's interesting that they opened the same family opened a, another brewery called a different name, such so as like an, yeah, in, an interesting, interesting branding uh, mm-hmm. strategy. Uh, so let's see. Uh, I mean, you can you can reach more people that way. I think. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I, people people going into a brewery, they don't know necessarily mm-hmm. who owns it. Exactly. I, I, it's mm-hmm. smart. It's really smart. And. They're going for like two different fields. So the Akmolji is a brew pub, so it's really focused on come and have dinner and or lunch and grab a beer. And then mm-hmm. Fall Line, it does have food, but it's more like just a regular tap room where you would just go to like get a flight or like a drink. Okay. And oh, are, are, oh okay. You already said you can get food. 
Yeah, the fall line has like sandwiches. I read, but then yeah. the, the the other one's like a full fledged like brew pub restaurant. Gotcha. And so they, Do they serve like different kinds of food. I don't know, Katie. I I didn't look that much into it. Oh, okay. Well, see, like this is the stuff that fascinates me because it was also a big thing in um the south when I was there for a lot of places. I don't know what you call. What do you call them? The places that just sell beer. L- like a so, like, a, can, a store. Or a brewery? Like Broken Chair. Like, so, mm-hmm. like you can bring your own food from anywhere in there. And like you can get Wendy's on your way there and bring your Wendy's in mm-hmm. and just drink the beer. I don't know if there's a, a specified name for it. I don't either. But anyway. Yeah, I almost prefer that rather than buying food from the brewery. But that, Absolutely. that's just me. Saves you money. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. And it also makes me want to drink more. Mm-hmm, Yeah. So Fall Line, they're just focusing on really t- distributing beer instead of like kind of going back to the old ways. They, they want to distribute off-site more than on-site. But the one beer that I wanted to highlight is called Daily Rind, which I thought was a clever name because it's a wheat beer, so it has a lot of citrus, and it got mm-hmm. a 3.67 on untapped, so not too bad. Oh, yeah, absolutely. So if you go to I Macon be- now, you have your choice of four breweries. So I notice a lot with citrus beers in the South, um, I like it a lot because they put a lot of citrus into all of their beers. They almost get too sweet and too heavy. I would very much appreciate like a citrusy lager or a citrusy like ale kind of beer. I like that they do that in the South. Yeah, that is cool. That is cool. One thing I noticed out here that I've never noticed before is they put watermelon. Like every brewery seems to have like a watermelon type beer. Mm. Isn't that freaky? That is weird, yeah. That's weird. But it's like it's like refreshing. It's it's really bizarre. You don't think it's gonna work, but it's it, but it good. does. Yeah, it's it pretty does. good. Well, I hope the Aldine family listens and likes it. Mm-hmm. But that's all we have for today. What what what'd you think? I, did, did you have fun? Absolutely. I feel very inspired to um go to Georgia. Go to go to Macon. <laughs> yeah, one of the problems with doing these during the pandemic is it does make you want to travel. Yes, it so does. So just keep it in the back I, of your mind. My sister Amy, she uh, took a trip down to Georgia recently um, to visit an old an old friend that had moved down there with her family, and they absolutely loved it. I, I was just on Wikipedia the other, the other day looking at, like, the most uh, populous cities in the United States, you know, like I do on Friday nights. I didn't realize, but Atlanta is, like, one of the fastest-growing cities in the United States. I will have the Charleston episode done soon, so we'll have to have you on. on we'll have, I know words very well. Yes, we'll ha- we'll, I, I'm good with the words. <laughs> we'll have to have you on back soon. Yes, please do. And that was another episode of Brewery Towns. Thank you.